We have looked at several planetary nebulae and compared how the mainstream sees them as the end-of-life process for a star, and how the electric universe sees them more as the beginning or as an intensified phase of an existing star. The shells may reveal the structure of the plasma flowing in and out of the star, the stellar Birkeland current. The images we see are generally static and make us think that they will remain so indefinitely. A recent follow-up imaging of the Stingray Nebula has revealed that it has dimmed significantly and part of the structure has changed. What can we make of these changes? The term planetary nebula, even in the mainstream explanation, is a misnomer, as they are not related to planets. The term originates from the planet-like round shape of these nebula, observed by astronomers through their early telescopes. The mainstream explanation for them is that they form at the end of life of a star of an intermediate mass, up to eight times the size of our Sun. These are relatively short-lived phenomena lasting a few ten thousands of years. They are created when a red giant sheds its outer layers of gas, and the exposed core of the star will then illuminate those layers in a dazzling display of colours. The Stingray Nebula seems to be behaving in a way that is unexpected. It is the youngest known planetary nebula in our sky. Hubble images taken 20 years apart show a dramatic change in the nebula's shape and brightness. You can see a dramatic change to the colours and the visible size of the nebula. The Stingray Nebula is comprised of gas and dust thought to have been expelled by its central star. The star will continue to heat up the material as it expands outwards, causing the gas and dust to become ionised and glow. The data from the Hubble image reveals a rapid change in the light emitted by glowing nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. Specifically, oxygen emissions dropped in brightness by a factor of nearly a thousand in this time period. The nebula should be getting larger with time, but here it is fundamentally changing shape and getting fainter, and doing so on an unprecedented scale. It is not growing larger and parts seem to be shrinking. So how can they explain this in their current models? The previous study showed that the central star increased in temperature from 40,000 Fahrenheit to 108,000 Fahrenheit between 1971 and 2002. They now think that this spike in temperature was caused by a brief burst of helium fusion. This would explain the sudden brightening and then the fading of the nebula. This does not explain the changes in shape that they have observed. This is thought to be one of the youngest planetary nebula only being observed for the first time back in 1990. Before this, the star itself had been well observed. Of course, there is a different way of looking at this. In the electric universe, these nebulas are created by plasma within the stellar Birkeland current, going into glow mode due to an increase in the current density travelling through the filament. Some of these nebulas even show the counter-rotation of the outer shells, as Don Scott had suggested would be occurring. So what can we see in these two images of the Stingray Nebula? In the 1996 image, we see greens, blues and reds. The red represents nitrogen, blue hydrogen and the green oxygen. In the 2016 image, we see a dramatic decrease in the visible hydrogen and oxygen. If we examine the colours, we see a dramatic decrease in both blue and green colours, with a predominance of red remaining in the most recent image. These colours are created by electrons changing their excited state within an atom. If ionisation is increasing, this can cause electrons to be removed from the atom or changed to a more excited state. When they fall back to a lower shell or the missing outer electron is reabsorbed, they emit a photon. The larger the drop, the higher the energy level of the photon emitted. So blue would have a higher energy level compared to red. So if this is indeed an active Birkeland current with a star at the centre, what are we seeing here? Plasma will be flowing along these filaments. This will consist of different elements, some neutral and some in a plasma state. Electrons will be flowing in the opposite direction to the general positive flow. As the current density increases, this can cause more electrons to be stripped from the atom and more electrons to be placed in an excited state. 
As these electrons fall back down to a lower energy state, they will emit a photon. As long as the charge density is high enough, this process can continue. Higher differences in potential can lead to electrons being placed into a higher energy state, meaning when they fall back to a lower state, they will emit higher energy photons. So as the current density increases, we will see a rise in the total number of photons emitted and also in the energy of these. It will shift from the red end of the spectrum up towards the blue and beyond. Equally, as the current flow decreases, we will see an overall diminishing of the brightness and a reduction of the blues and greens in favour of more red. Now, chemistry is also at play here, as certain atoms create certain colours when their electrons are placed into an excited state. As larger atoms have more electrons, they will tend to have more complex emission spectra, as there are more possible jumps for the electrons to make. As an example, nitrogen radiates primarily at one line in the red part of the spectrum. Ionised nitrogen radiates primarily as a set of lines in the blue part of the spectrum. So what might be going on here? How does the temperature spike relate to this activity and the sudden appearance of the nebula itself? This star underwent some rapid changes to its temperature and size leading up to the appearance of the nebula. A hotter star in the electric star model would suggest more tufts with a greater flow of current. This equally requires a greater inflow of electrons. So why would the star be seen to shrink then? Remember, this is really only the visible part of the star, and in this case what we see would be the plasma sheath. When a star does not receive enough incoming electrons, it can expand this sheath to allow for the capture of more electrons. This whole sheath can end up glowing brightly. This makes the star appear cooler and larger. As more electrons flow inwards, this sheath can shrink, making it appear as if the star became smaller and hotter. Currently, the star at the centre appears as a blue and hot star. Could a sudden change of the current density account for the changes in the star and cause the plasma in the pinched part of the filament to go into glow mode for a short period of time? How dramatic do these changes have to be to cause such a large part of the Birkeland current to light up for a short period of time? The area we see lit probably consists of a number of shells within the local stellar filament. When you examine the two images, to me it is clear that this is not really a case of the shape changing. I see the same outline of the shells in the older image and in the more recent image, just with certain parts turned off. In the older image, we can see the highest energy levels towards the center, with more red towards the outside. This makes sense as the highest current density would be found towards the center. In the more recent image, we see a significant dimming and the central area has lost a large part of the blue-green colour, with more red being present. If the current density is falling, then at some stage this will drop below the level that will allow for continuous emission of light, meaning that it will go into dark mode. The current is still flowing, but we can no longer see it. The other planetary nebula that we have observed seem to be much more long-lived, implying that the current flow is much more constant compared to this example. And this suggests that there are differences in terms of the general flow of the filament, which could affect the filament for a prolonged period of time, and then very short changes that are more like a ripple on a pond and cause dramatic short-lived changes. What drives these changes in the current flow? Are there changes in the local magnetic field that play a role? Or are other events which are much further away responsible? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.